other announcements? Kathy, you got anything to say this morning? No. No? You sure? No good stories or anything? No. Nope? Okay. Let's begin our worship this morning with our first hymn. <laughs> This morning is Divine Service Setting 1, page 151, page 151. Would the congregation please stand? We make our beginning this beautiful summer Sunday in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we think we have no sin, we fool ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Before confessing our sin to God our Father, let us pause for a moment to remember and to recall our very own sinfulness. Let us together confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God. We confess that we are unable to 
of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us and for his sake, God does forgive us of all of our sin. To those who believe in him, he gives his power to become his children, and he bestows upon you his Holy Spirit. Now may the Lord who has begun this work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our entry for this morning will be parsed half verse by half verse with everybody joining together for the glory of God. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like the flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And his place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. And his righteousness to children and children. To those who keep his covenant. And remember his commandments. The Lord hath established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Slow to anger and bonding and steadfast love. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who here offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, O gracious Lord.
This is usually the time that we greet each other with a great big hug, handshake, or kiss, but sticking with the COVID laws, as I'm going to call them, we're going to turn around and we're going to elbow somebody with good intention and love. <laughs> really? So, just say hi to somebody with a great big smile on your face. Not like that, Bill. Bill, no. <laughs> the Lord be with you all. <clears throat> Together we pray the colic for today, which is printed out in your worship insert sheet. Together we pray. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the reading. The Old Testament reading is found in Isaiah 55, 10 through 13. For as the rain and the snow came down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose, and I shall succeed in the things for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is found in Romans 8, 12 through 17. So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and that if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That's right. We're singing the Alleluia verse reading the Holy Gospel. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel is found in Matthew 13 as follows. Glory to you. The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gathered about him, 
so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood, stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path. And the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil, but when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other, th other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while and when tribulation and persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word, and understands it. He indeed, he indeed bears fruit and yields, and in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Congregation, please be seated. We continue on our worship with our next hymn. <coughs> Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and His Spirit. There's an old, old story about a monastery that trained young Christian men for the ministry, and it's a story that I've totally enjoyed ever since I heard it. But anyway, I'm going to use it this morning. The story goes that in this monastery there was once a young fellow, a young student, who lived in constant fear of having to preach a sermon for daily chapel, which was, of course, part of the normal curriculum. I remember feeling that way myself. Everybody had to do it. 
Well, this young brother decided that he would try to make a deal with the headmaster, see if he could get out of it. He offered to do anything, I mean anything, in lieu of preaching that sermon. After hearing the brother's concern and realizing his anxiety over preaching a sermon to the other brothers, the headmaster decided right there and then that preaching a sermon was exactly what this young upcoming <coughs> preacher needed to do. So the young student was promptly told that he would, on the following day, conduct the chapel services and preach the sermon for the day. Well, the next day it came. Nervous and awkward, this young brother stood in the pulpit and looked out into the eyes of his peers, not quite sure what to do. He simply asked, brothers, do you know what I'm going to say? And not knowing, of course, what he was going to say, each of his peers all shook their heads in their seats going like this. No, they didn't know. Upon which the young student continued, he said, neither do I, so everybody stand for the benediction. Peace be with you and all that. <laughs> Needless to say, the headmaster was a little upset. He summoned the young man after the others had all left and told him that he was going to give him a second chance. He told him that he would again be conducting chapel for the services and having the sermon for the following day, so get busy. So the next day, the young brother once again took his place in the pulpit, and once again he began in the same manner and with the same words that he did the day before. Brothers, do you know what I'm going to say? This time, having experienced his brevity the day before, all of his peers nodded their head and affirmative. Yep, we know what you're going to say. Upon which your brother continued with, since you already know, there's really no point in me saying anything more, so let's all stand for the benediction. Peace be with you, and amen. <laughs> well, by this time, the headmaster was absolutely livid. Once again, he summoned the young student and told him that he just was plain fed up with his little tantics and his tricks. He told him that on the following day, he would do chapel, and he would preach a sermon. And if he didn't, he'd be confined to his quarters and be put on a diet of bread and water. Well, the third day brought with it exactly what the first two days had brought. This young student began in the same manner and with the same words, Brothers, do you know what I'm going to say? Well, this time his peers were a bit more confused, having experienced a couple of different things from him. Some of them shook their heads in the negative, no, we don't know what you're going to say. The rest of them nodded their heads in the positive, yep, I'm afraid we do know what you're going to say, upon which the young brother continued, well, it seems that some of you know and some of you don't. So let those who know tell those who don't. Let's all stand for the benediction. Peace be with you and amen. <laughs> now, as amusing as I find this story, it's one that Jesus may very well have employed himself. In fact, the message given by our friend, the, the brother, the young fellow, the young students, actually kind of paralleled Jesus' parable in our gospel lesson for this morning. Jesus told stories with a purpose. And he knew that people all over the world with diverse backgrounds of all kind and education levels of all kind could all understand a simple story that taught a lesson. So he used those parables all the time. Instead of preaching at his audience, he would often catch their attention with an entertaining story that would leave them thinking. In our gospel lesson for this morning, Jesus tells a parable about a farmer who sows the seed for a harvest. Jesus tells a parable that could have very easily ended with the same words that the young brother in my story ended with. Let those of you who know tell those of you who don't. Now parables typically have one point to make, and this particular parable isn't any different than any of the rest of them, even though Jesus goes to the trouble of breaking it down in order to explain it to his disciples, as John read earlier. It still has one underlying message, and that message is, the sower went out to sow. 
in Jesus' parable, if the sower had not gone out to sow the seed, there wouldn't be any story. We wouldn't have to worry about those, those seeds, which the birds all gathered up and ate that was sown. We wouldn't have to know anything about the seed that fell on the rocky ground or those that were choked out by the weeds and worries of this world. And we most certainly wouldn't have to worry about the ones that grew and thrived in more 30, 60, and 100 fold. You see, if the sower had just simply left his seed in the grain bin, none of this would happen. None of the failures of the seed to grow and none of the crop harvest. I'm sure you all know that the seed in the parable represents the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are the ground in which God sows the seed. When God sows the seed of the gospel, he knows that some of that seed isn't going to be received. He knows that some of it will take off like a rabbit in a race, but like in the story, won't finish the race. He knows that some of that seed is going to get choked out because we put material needs before our spiritual needs, most of us do in our own lives. Yet he still sows the seed because God also knows that some seeds will take root and will grow strong and will produce 30, 60, and 100 fold. You might be surprised to find out someday that that might be you. The main message of the parable is that we have to plant the seed and plant it with abundance and then leave the rest up to God. You see, it is God that makes everything grow anyway. All the way from a stock of corn that maybe you've seen on your way into church this morning, to standing out in the field, to yours and my spiritual maturity in the field of life. There are things we do to hamper that growth, like the parable tells us about, but it is God and God alone that makes it grow. And keeping the good news of Jesus Christ all locked up in the confines of a church is like keeping the kernels of grain bagged in a bag before a farmer goes out to sell. You'd never see a farmer cuddling over and every once a week going to his shed where he could feel good about all that kernels he's got wrapped up in the bag yet, do you? Why do churches act that way? We keep God all wrapped up, nice and tidy for us on a Sunday morning. We forget to go sow the seed. There wouldn't be any crop if a farmer did that. And that's, what, that's the point Jesus is making here. And keeping the goodness of Jesus Christ all locked up and confined in the church is just like a farmer not planting it. And what I mean, uh, I suppose there is some room for an argument that one can use these kernels of the gospel for our own good. I mean, by that, that we could grind it up, use it for flour for our own selfish nourishment. And I suppose there are Christians like that in this world. Or we could take the seeds of the gospel and go out and plant them leaving the seeds set in a bag, leaving the seeds in the confines of a church just isn't an option, folks. Because if we do that, those needs, those seeds that, that God places in our heart and salvation that he gives us, a message of the gospel of Jesus, those seeds will lose their germination and eventually just rot away. And that church is going to stink from here to heaven. Because it does that. Same thing is true of us. We can, I suppose, keep the God, good news of Jesus Christ for ourselves and feed upon it ourselves, or we can spread it around the community, the state, or wherever that car or pickup of ours takes us. But if we do nothing, even the good news of Jesus becomes meaningless. In the parable, remember in the parable the sower went out to sow? Back in 19, I think it was 98, Mark McGuire uh, hit 70 home runs breaking the old record that Roger Maris had set in 1961. Most of us kind of remember that stuff, I guess, but what we are not probably aware of 
is that in that same year that McGuire hit 70 home runs, broke all the records, he also struck out 155 times. About once every game that he played that year. Now my point is this, had McGuire not swung at those pitches, nobody would have known that he struck out twice as many times as home runs that he hit. Neither would he have hit those home runs had he not swung at the ball that many times. The batter went to bat in his case. The sower must go to sow. Not every ball was hit and not every seed will grow to, that we plant. But the seeds that are planted and the balls that were swung at were so plentiful that it produced 30 and 60 and 100 fold. That's what Jesus was telling us in his parable. He says, go ye therefore and sow seeds of the kingdom of heaven. That is our commission. That's our commission from God. It's to simply share Jesus Christ with someone. And you can do it better than anybody that you know because you have your own story of how Jesus worked and, and is alive in your life. I have that same story too. God equips us to do that. He commissions us to do that. That's what he tells us to do. The rest of it is God's business. That's where we stick our nose in too often and should just kind of be asking God what to do. And then when he does tell us, go share your life with somebody or go help somebody in their comfort or their sorrow, just be with them. But we always got to form a committee, make a plan A, plan B, and then when it all fails, we sit around blaming Satan for it. Life could be much simpler for all of us, much plainer, much pointier. May God bless us, and may we boldly get to swinging and sowing the word of the gospel. Can't hit a ball until you swing at it, folks. And God will make a sale for you. May we all be so blessed. Amen. Amen. Let us together stand and confess the faith into which we believe and were baptized in the words of Nicene Creed, recorded on page 158. Together we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. We bow our heads in prayer. Each week in our Sunday prayers, we pray by name for families here at Bethesda, asking your blessings and your presence in their life, Lord. This morning we pray for Jeanette, Jordan, Evan, Simon, Kirkpatrick, and Merrill and Timothy and Bryce Planto, and Andrea, Ben, Jada, and Connor Kramer. Lord, in your mercy. We also pray, Lord, for those that are suffering from disease and illnesses of all types, shapes, and forms. We pray for Marilyn Swain, 
for Isla White, for Judy Dre, for Pastor Art, for Jean Montgomery, for Della Schmidt, for Ken Lorang and Zoe Jones, for Morgan Gerby, and Irene Becker, and Mary Ann Allen, and Herbie Gosel, and Betty Severson, for Vi Salas, for Cheryl Huddleston, and Merle Klein too. We also pray, Lord, for those that we name to you silently in our hearts. We pray, Lord, that through miracle or medicine you may heal, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray also for those that are serving in the military, both at home and abroad. Send guardian angels to guide and guard them safely to and from their destinations, Lord, in your mercy. We also pray, Lord, for the family of Paul Schnoes, as you have called him to his final resting place in heaven to be with you. Lord, we ask that you be with his family, comfort them with the assurance of a resurrection, not only for him, but for all of us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we turn to you today as a believing congregation, as a group of people who, who confess to be Christian and need some help here on this earth. The world seems to be up against something it cannot stop, change, correct, or even control. And we're all kind of freaked out because we're helpless. That's not new, Lord, but it, the awareness of it might be. So, Lord, bring to us an assurance that you always have, you still do, and always will have complete control over everything that happens on this earth. Grant to each of us a complete faith as possible that we may be strong in our faith, that we pray for healing for those who have contracted this disease of COVID-19 and safety from it for those who have it. Help us to focus more on you than upon ourselves. Help us to be more aware than unyielding, and help us to be more faithful than fearful. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We also pray, Lord, for our nation and our country and its people. You have given us this good and gracious land as our heritage. Grant, Lord, that we remember your generosity and constantly strive to do your will. Forgive us when we don't. Teach us your will, the difference between your will and our wants. And Lord, I don't know where we've gone wrong with this over the years, probably in a hundred places I don't even realize, but Lord, forgive us for the sin that we do and at the same time stand in front of this world and declare ourselves Christians up to our necks and eyeballs. And yet, Lord, we vote for stuff and encourage people in ways that Satan is the leader, not you. So save us from all of that. Keep us from the violence and the discord and confusion that Satan is throwing our way. Help us, I guess, in plain or ordinary words, to know the difference between right and wrong. Because there is a difference. Maybe that's what we have forgotten. Keep us from being prideful and arrogant about things we need to be humble and repentant over. And keep us from every evil course of action, known or unknown. Support us in defending our liberty and grant those who we have entrusted with the authority of governing over us a spirit of wisdom that there may be justice and peace in our nation even though we don't know how to get it or maybe have forgotten what it is. Help us to be that one nation under God that we all claim to be. So into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom and what we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you holy lord almighty father and everlasting god through jesus christ our lord who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life therefore with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven 
We laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. So gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, to renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all the glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Remember us, Lord, in your kingdom, and teach us also to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For I am the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all, always.
pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you never to forsake us, but always to rule over our hearts and minds with and by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled to better serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant each and all of you his peace. Please be seated. We finish our worship with our last hymn. Seated. Any birthdays this week? Bill? Yeah, birthday this week? What? Wood. <laughs> how, old, how old is he? Jeremy? Today he's 67, but tomorrow I'll be older. <laughs> Not old. Yeah. Covered the whole year in one day right there. Yep. <laughs> Bill, get a birthday. Who else has got one? Liz? Do you have one also? Anybody else? Really? Well, you don't look it. <laughs> Don't act it either. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have one? Okay, happy birthday to Liz. Did somebody raise their hand? To Liz and Bill. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you.
Sunday right after church. We'll start, it'll kick off at noon, and then we'll go to four or five, however long you want to stay there. Uh, but it, like I said, it's going to be an upper, upper Chautauqua Park. Did I say that right? I always have a problem with that place. So. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to have a grill. We're going to be cooking our own stuff. And we have a sign-up sheet in the back for all the items that we would like for people to donate to Great Kids so that we can keep this low cost. Uh, we don't want you to cater, so it's kind of costly to do that. So we can make better food than a caterer can anyway. <laughs> Anyway, thanks. I'll buy the keg of beer. <laughs> if, if, if you allow it, if you allow me to do that, I sure would. <laughs> you can't have a Lutheran church without beer. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't let Andy go to work. <laughs> God's blessings to each and every one of you. Be sure to share Jesus with somebody this week. Good. Thanks.